down Here are my prayers My heart will wait And I will bow my will So you can have your way Here are the things I can't do. Lord, I'm nothing, I'm nothing without you, Lord. And I will take you away. You're unfailing, work more than all I want. I will see. my hopes here are my doubts here are the things that I can't figure out here are my storms my crashing seas here are the bad that have brought me to my death and I will take your unfailing word more than all I want. I will seek you first. I will bless your name when the night is long. God, you have my surrender. Here are my prayers, my heart will wait, and I will bow my will so you can have your way. Here are the things I can't do. Lord, I'm nothing, I'm nothing without you, Lord, and I will take. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on you. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on you. Come on, let's stretch our hands. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on you. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on. I cast my cares on you. And I will take you.
with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a son of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a son of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer. I am a son of God. I'm no longer a slave to be. I am a son of God, and we sing, Oh. Son of God, you split the sea, you split the sea, so I can walk right through it. My feet were drawn in perfect love. You rescued me, so I can stand and sing. I am a son of God. Ooh, I am a son of God. Ooh, I am a son of God. Morning, family. Let's pray just before we read the word. Father, we thank you again for the privilege of being here in your house. And Father, this morning as we're about to read your word, we ask you, Father, to help us that our hearts would be still so we could hear your, wo your voice, Father. Speak to us, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you know, I'm in the parables, eh? And I just want to mention, you know, a parable is a... Is a Small, a short story with a deep spiritual teaching. And we all know the stories, but we have to hear the spiritual teach, uh, the word from the Lord. Okay, so let's, let's be ready to hear what he's saying to us this morning. And what I'm going to be reading this morning is again the parable of um, the prodigal son. I'm going to be reading from Luke 15, from 11 to 24. Jesus says, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided, divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, 
and there he wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a, a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the field to fe feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to, and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran on f and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to him, said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. <coughs> You know, when I was, I really have been seeking the Lord's face about the parables, to hear what he wants to say to us, because the stories are so awesome, hey? <coughs> and, you know, the Lord showed me three personalities here. And our desire has got to be that we want to be like Jesus. So we've got to have his personality, so let's just check these three personalities in the story. The first one is the one of the guy who wants all his possessions and goes to a far country and wastes it. Have we wasted what our Father has given us? Are we wasting what he's given us? Because this guy, the youngster, didn't know that his father was going to receive him with open arms. But we know that no matter what we do, we can come back to God and he'll receive us back. If we humble ourselves before him, this guy humbled himself before his father, but often there's so much arrogance in us. But if we are humble before God, he will forgive us and receive us as his sons. Then there's the father. <laughs> you know, in the world today, the, mainly the young people, are not having an easy time. I don't think anybody's having an easy time, but for the youngsters, it's more difficult. But are we ready to receive them back? Our family must know home must always be home for them. We've always got to open our door for our family. That's what this father did. We've got to make, make them comfortable at home and, you know, there was a thing about tough love long ago. There's no more, no more tough love anymore. We've got to have the love of God towards people. And then the third one, this is the one that the Lord really majored on when he was talking to me. Remember the first guy was in a pigsty physically. But so often our hearts are in a pigsty. So we see two big stars, a physical one and a spiritual one. This guy resented his brother coming home. How often do we resent what other people have, have asked the Lord for? You know, if somebody is looking for a job and God opens the door for him, we're quick to try and close it. Because we are jealous, like this guy was. And you know, it's no good being nice to nice people. We've got to be nice to the down and out people, those who need us. We are blessed. We are in an ascended position. We should be. But if we are resentful, then we are not in a descended place. Now, I just want to... In my Bible, I've written some words. 
let's not begrudge people what God opens doors for, when God opens doors for them. Don't feel bitter and don't resent what God gives others. I'm saying this because I know things that have happened that have been hurtful. People ask God and God opens doors that are like impossible. And we, we sit there saying, why? Why do they get this? Why should they have this? How much are we prepared to give to build somebody else up? Remember that when we come to the table, Jesus gave everything to give us the right to come back to our Father. So when you come to the table this morning, remember that, that Jesus paid an awesome price for us. But we don't deserve it. But he paid it for us. So guys, come from the back down the left side and back up the right side and take your, um, the communion and just wait till we pray together afterwards. You know, we sing awesome songs, eh? Speak to me, Lord. I am listening. Are we listening? If we don't hear what he's saying, we're wasting our time. God is speaking to us. He wants to get us to the place where he can work through us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again this morning for the sacrifice you made for our salvation. We come to you, Father, just as we are, and we know that you receive us, Lord. We ask you, Father, the areas in our lives that we haven't completely surrendered to you, that you would put such a light on it, Lord, that we would see and hear and understand that we could draw closer to you, Lord, and become as you are. Thank you now, Father, for the bread and the wine, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
sana Give 
myself away so you can use me give myself away I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me give myself away give myself away I give myself away so you can use me my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself myself to you my life is not my own to you I belong I give myself give myself to you give myself away I give myself away So you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. I surrender all. I give to you withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender, I surrender to you. Everything I give to Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, I surrender, I surrender all to you. Everything I give to you, withholding nothing, holding nothing. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, Lord, I'm holding nothing, withholding nothing, I come as I am, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding. Father, thank you this morning. Truly, we appreciate you. Surrendering to you, O oh Father, withholding nothing. Yes, we do thank you, Lord. Thank you even for the weight of your presence in this place. For the fellowship of the brothers. 
and for what you are doing, Lord, in our lives. Please just open your mouth and begin to appreciate him. Lord, you're good, Father. Thank you for the leading of the Spirit in our lives, in our hearts, in, in everything that we do, Lord. Being led as we submit to your word, and that everything we do will be by the leading of the Spirit in our lives. And for this, Lord, we give you all the praise, give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Thank you guys, thank you. Well, create a few people next to you say, it's getting warm, it's getting warm, it's getting warm. On screen, no biggie varam. Yes. So welcome, and those that are watching on the live streaming. Did you have a good week? You know, you know, in this house at least, you must force yourself to have a good week because I'm gonna ask when I see you all the time. Every Sunday I ask, did you have a good week? It, 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 it had challenges, but it was good. You overcame. So welcome this morning. Well, before we continue, let me just make a few announcements. Um, on the 2nd of, 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 of September, I was told on the 2nd of September to give you this announcement, we will have our spring walk again. <laughs> Those of you that come to the spring walk, you know I always come out first, eh? I'm tired of winning this thing. Please, somebody just take the title. <laughs> so, 2nd of September, 7 a.m., come together here in the church and it's a three kilometer walk. We go down, up, back, down, I think, yeah, down, up, back, come to the church, yeah, three kilometer. So it's really fun and then after that we have some games and stuff that we do. So be ready for that and please go and exercise and get ready for that because this guy, man, <laughs> Okay, and then the second one, just a reminder about, we have a picture there, I don't know if you can put it on the, the reminder about the conference that we have in October. Time, time, time is running fast, hey? I was talking to Pastor John and say, I can't wait. So it's like the drum roll, almost here. So on the 8th of, of October, uh, on that particular day on the 8th, He'll be ministering in the morning and in the evening, and then the evening of the Monday and the Tuesday. So please get ready for that conference, okay? And on the, on the, on the, on the other side, on the, we have a bit of a bad news that, that we had during the course of the week that um, Alfred Julius, who was an elder in this house years ago, passed away. And we, we do give our commiserations to, to, to the family. He was part of this house for, for years. And we truly feel bereft and, and our commiserations to, to the family. 
And yet also again last night, Moreto received a call from Nelly to say that uh, Barbara Foree, who's also a long standing member in this house, has just passed away. Barbara Foree was also part of us here. So we do really give our commiserations to, to the family. Is that okay? So we will give any uh, announcements as per the funeral and stuff, whatever that's going to happen, we will let you know of the arrangements that are going to be made. Is that okay? So le let us just continue into the teaching that we are going to do today. We're starting a new series today. I hope to speak on this in the next few weeks. But please do allow me today to just to, to scatter seed and thoughts on this particular teaching that I intend to go into in details from, 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 from next week. So today I just want to uh, at least maybe make an introductory session of um, what I intend to speak on from the next week. It's called, it's titled Building God's Way. Um, and we do know as, 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 as the sons of God that God is, God is busy building his house. God is busy building his church. And I want us to um, have uh, draw attention to the fact that it's not us people building, it's God building. And whatever is being built, be it the Son of God or the church, God must build. This simply means that when, this, when we build God's way, we have to have at least a pattern. We have to have a template. We have to have a plan in terms of how do we start building God's way. Because many people have built, like for an example, uh, um, many people have built houses, right? Many people have built houses without a plan. Without a play. I know I'm way ahead of myself here, but here's a question. Would you build anything and then stay in it? Do you trust yourself enough to build something and then stay in it? Or you like... So when you build without a plan, you don't trust what you have built. Can you see that? But when we build in the house of God, we have to build God's way. And God has a plan for everything. In terms of what he is building in the season, there's a plan, there's a design, uh, there's a template for us to follow. And really, for the next few weeks as we go through the teaching and even come to studying the life of Christ, we will realize how Christ is the ultimate design for the church uh, to be built. So uh, this is what's going to happen. So in dealing with this particular teaching, we will really look at a lot of scriptures when we start to go into full details of what we are talking about and find in them God's way of building his people, of building his church, and building his son. So this is an important teaching that really will help us at least uh, from the coming weeks to have detailed view of what, why, how, when, who to say the least, to mention uh, the list, just to say uh, uh, who builds, how does he build, what is he building, why is he building it? Because I believe that people have a lot of questions in terms of what God is doing and no answers, right? Even people that have been in the church for 30 years, you ask them something, they are not so sure, like, uh, let me get back to you on that one. So it is important when we study the word, we go into details in terms of what God is doing, how he is doing it, why is he doing it. And in that, we really truly find the purpose for which we are called as the son of God. And we realize that God does not build alone. God needs man to build with. Can you see that? So God that's why God can never do anything in the earth except he does it through mankind. Okay? It will be illegal. Somebody said it will be illegal for God to do anything in the earth without letting us know what he's doing. That's why we have people like apostles and, and prophets that will bring the divine move of God or the direction 
as to where is God leading the church. So God will never do anything without letting the church know. That's illegal. And you can never find that in, 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 uh, 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 in how God deals with stuff or do things. So it's important to know these things. So when we look in, in like, for example, when we look in the book of Genesis, it speaks of how the Lord blessed the man and ordered him to be fruitful and have dominion. We know that scripture, right? And God blessed man and said, be fruitful and multiply and have dominion. And God gave specifics in terms of what man have, uh, has to have dominion on. God never gave man dominion uh, over others. But there were specifics in terms of what one has to have dominion on. But God spoke and said, uh, let the man be fruitful and have those who know. Oh, these are the scripture uh, we cannot overlook as they play really a huge role in making us understand the plan and how to be cooperative as God would not force anything on us. So understanding the plan makes us be submissive and be willing to be cooperative with everything that God is doing. So the fact that, like sometimes people are saying God is not doing anything in my life or not saying anything, simply because people are not cooperative with what God is doing, or people are not listening to what God is saying. Like for an example, how people would say that God has not been talking to me for the whole week. It's impossible. It's only possible if we don't study the Word then. But if we are people that study and listen to the Word, God will always communicate to us. Why? Because God's Word is a preferred medium of communication with His people. So God may not communicate to you through miracles, signs, and wonders, but choose to speak through his word. Can you see that? So when God chooses to communicate through the word, this is how he builds. When he chooses to communicate through the word, one needs to be an attentive listener. If we fail to listen, we do not hear what God is saying. And failure to hear what God is saying is a delay in the building process in our lives as a son of God. That means God builds line upon line, precepts upon precepts. That means if we fail or step outside of the precepts of God, then the building stops. You see that? Have you ever been, uh, seen wh when people want to build something, they start but they never finish it? You're building a house, you're like, I want to build a mansion, baby, uh, 20 rooms. And then you start with the foundation and then it stops at the fourth line of the bricks. You're like, you stop there for the next 10 years, saving up to go up to the roof. Why? There's no plan. It's no plan, never planned. Hmm? So that's not how we are supposed to build. That's why Apostle Thomas said this here. He said this, uh, uh, it's an aggressive advancement. That means even things that you did not finish, you must finish this year. Push to finish everything. Okay? Amen? Amen. Because we are building. So God finishes everything that he is building. And he builds in his word, in Christ. He can never build outside. So the church of God must submit, totally submit to this word and be cooperative with what the Lord is doing. So that's why I, I always even say things like, we can be in a place of grace, an environment of grace, but be grace deficient because we are not cooperating with the flow and the move of God in that space. So we have to be careful of that. So in the beginning of everything, we have to get our stuff uh, in order so, and realize the do's and don'ts because um, really men did nothing to be blessed. If you look at it, God blessed the man, said be fruitful and multiply, blessed him. Men didn't do anything to get blessed. Okay? There. But as a result of the friendship that man had with God, God blessed man. Said, be fruitful and multiply. So, what does this mean? 
in the building of the church, we also learn to understand that you don't pray and fast for blessings. Because the day you stop praying, you will think that your blessings are gone simply because you are not praying. Can you see that? How you build is very important. If you build, if, if one uh, 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 thinks that building maturity in their lives is by uh, pr prayer, for an example, prayer, praying to be mature, it does not work like that because once you do not pray, you feel like you are not mature anymore. Can you see that? It has got to be within the Word by building by uh, um, the Word of God, allowing the Word to put us in the way or put it in a way that we understand maturity, growth, development uh, in the journey that we have with the Lord. Allow Him to be the template, for an example. And this helps us when we study the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the uh, uh, um, the perfect pattern that God gave to us to say this is how the church of God ought to live. So God was happy with the relationship they had and decided to bless this man. So we cannot have a narrow view of blessings, but um, yeah, we cannot have a narrow view of blessings, but we can certainly really enjoy the manifold blessings uh, that sprouts or shoot out from bowing our knee in obedi obedience to God, okay? A narrow view of blessings will say to you as a son of God, you only get blessed when you do this and don't get blessed when you do that. Can you see that? But when we have a broad view, allow, allow uh, our view to be enlarged, we get to see that we can still remain, enjoy the blessings that come from bowing our knee in obedience to him. So, uh, and, and also we see how, firstly, the man was created in the presence of God. That's Eden, which speaks of the, of, for an example, God puts man in Eden, which speaks of the presence of God. This is where God would create things in his image and according to his likeness and anything outside of his presence would carry, uh, because anything outside of his presence would carry a different image. So when God builds anything, he builds it in his presence. You understand that? In his presence. And his presence speaks of his weight. When we, you see in the Bible where the Bible speaks of God's weight, it's his presence. When it speaks of the presence of God, it speaks of his weight. Remember the example that I made uh, a few weeks ago to say that if you are outside and hear my voice, you know that I'm here. Right? So if we are in a place where we hear the word of God. We know that God is present. And provided it's a pure, unadulterated word of God. There's, there's, there's purity. There must be purity in the way that says uh, God is present. We understand the principle of representatives where God would use people. But that voice should carry the voice of God. Of course. Is that okay? So it is important for us to be aware of these things. So which is why many things um, people stress about are, are, are for a different spiritual location and not in the presence of God really. So when everything um, is provided for, God started to make man and obviously uh, ended up fellowshipping with him. So these fellowships are important. Fellowships are important. Tent. Because it's time to impart grace on one another. It's time to strengthen one another. It's time to get to know one another. Like for an example, the fellowships that we have here after the service. This is not just a coffee club that we have here. <laughs> you know how easy it is when to, to really change fellowship into a coffee club something. You see that? The, the, this, 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 like for an example, we have, we have talk on the bride with the gentleman, one of the homogeneous groups in the house, um, soon coming. And I said on the group, this, this, the intention is not to build a social club or another gathering for men, but the intention is to fellowship. Whatever is extra, whatever, whether bride or sweets or whatever, that's extra. But there must be the focus of why we come together. 
And we build that on what? Christ. That must be the focus. Failure to see Christ as the focus will deviate us. We, we get derailed easily and then we lose focus and then we go on the wrong direction. Have you ever seen somebody going on the wrong direction but still shouting the name of Jesus seven times? It's possible to go on a totally wrong direction but still shouting Jesus seven times, still applying the blood seven times and doing that. Still praying for your teaspoons for demons not to. <laughs> so we must build right. And when we build God's way, we get to understand that we must never be, uh, let us not make God religious because he's not. Things that we think, have you ever realized how when you think people can have, like for example, people can have goosebumps and when they have goosebumps and they say God is here, you can have goosebumps in the absence of God. Can you see that? You can have goosebumps just from getting cold. Chilled environments give people goosebumps. So when we're building as the son of God or God's way, we have to make sure that we don't just say things that we think, but we speak as the Lord speaks to us. Allow the Spirit to lead and say, this is exactly what's happening. We are not under pressure. Remember when I said, if you are a prophet, never be under pressure and want to prophesy. When you see people, always listen to the Spirit. If we're building not in the way of God, we are always under pressure to impress others. And that's not how God wants to build. So these fellowships are very important in the building that God is doing. So, uh, um, so God wants to build something that carries his true uh, nature um, and, and, and always carry the presence of God. We have said in the past that we must hear God's word to know uh, that he is present. And of course, there is also that principle of representation that we spoke um, on. Um, the truth is that God does not have any problem to build anything and indwell in it or, or, or be found in it. That's why I asked the question, would you be, do you trust yourself enough to build anything and, and live in it? Or because God has a plan for everything and also timing is also important when you build when you build god is perfect on timing uh, we know that god is never late not too early right never late never early on time god is on time whatever he does he does it on time so we cannot come here nine o'clock and have the service until 4 p.m and say we are still giving god time to work if we say, Lord, we start at 9 o'clock, we finish at 11 o'clock, God will do his work from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. If we prolong and then stops at 4 o'clock, I said, we had to give the Spirit of God time to work. Hey, that's not how God works. We may God not to be God of order when we do that. We have to be accurate in how we represent the Lord. Can you see that? Can you see that? So God, timing is very important when we are building. Like for an example, I was building a retaining wall at home for, for the garden, doing my gardening, and I built a wall. And the time was not on my side because I was building in the evening, putting my bricks there, doing it, doing it. And I had a spirit level, mind you. I had, <laughs> I had a spirit level. I'm like, yes, this boy is good, hey? In the morning when I came to view my work, I'm like, let me see the cup of coffee. I'm like, it's not straight. <laughs> it was not straight. So I have to break it and start again. <laughs> so, but <laughs> I'm saying this to say timing. It's important. So God is always on time. He's never late. He's never early. He's on time. So when he builds, there's accuracy in the measures and everything that 
God is doing. Okay? When you miss your timing, you will pay for it. Like now I have to buy another mm, s- s- bag of cement to fix my problems. Can you see that? Shortcuts, they never work. In building God's way, shortcuts never work. Allow the word of God to brew in you, to work in you as a son of God. Somebody said, I had a meeting with somebody uh, during the course of the week. He said, the apostolic message must be caught before it's taught. Caught before it's taught. So it's caught and then it's taught. Can you understand that? Not just taught before it's caught. Then there's a lot of, of, of mistakes there. So we, we, we have to allow this word in us to be cooked in us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow it to grow. That's how he, he, he built us. Allow it to grow in, 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 in us. Allow him to speak to us, to teach us all the very important things that he wants us to know. And uh, so the church of God, so the church of God can really uh, grow. So when it comes to building um, God's son, let him do it. Uh, another thing that we have to understand is how to become a principal. Okay? How to become, in fact, how to become a vessel and allow the Lord to do things through you. Sometimes when people are in, in a space or in a place of being vessels of God and they know that they are vessels of God, they take all the honor, all the glory, all the pegs, and like, yeah, I'm, I'm the man of the moment. No, you're not. You're not. God is. Can you see this? So because God does it through the vessel. So when it comes to building the Son of God, we are representatives, we are vessels, but it is God that is actually building his people. Can you see that? So no one can ever take the glory from that. It's, it's, the credit goes to, to, to the Father. So let him do it and just be a vessel through which he does all the work and, and not interfere. Um, you know, when God does something, make sure that you don't interfere. Like for an example, we will pray and say, God, your will be done, right? How many of us here have ever said, God, your will be done. Aha. Uh-huh. But once the will of God starts to be done or starts to work in your life, you start to complain and say, God, until when? How long is this going to take place? Can you see that? So we say your will, but we come with our own will and say, God, maybe we should substitute. Maybe we should change that and do it my way. I wouldn't want to be in this situation. So, but God, you understand, Moses. I'm just a human being. So why don't you understand? You will forgive me. And we live in a totally dangerous zone where we say God understands. It's a haphazard living. We cannot be found in that space as the son of God. So if we, we, we have to work on this. We have to work on this. That's why you find things like Hebron that has to happen in our lives where we build relationships. It's important. And we, we struggle in building relationships. Um, our, we struggle in building a relationship with God, but we want to build him a church. A person would be struggling to build a relationship with God, but wants to build God a church. Can you see that? How are we going to know? Because there are specifications. When God builds something, there are specifications. Like for an example, God, we spoke on, on the mosaic templates a while back. Uh, when God says to Mo- Moses, I want you to build the tabernacle, God gave Moses specifications to say, this is the type of the material that you are going to use. And this is where you are going to get it from. And then these are the measurements that you are going to use. So Moses didn't use his own measurements. Moses didn't choose what material to use. God chose the material, 
God chose the measurements. God chose the people to do the work. Can you see that? So it's got to be God's choice. So in building his house, his people, his church, it's his specs, specifications, what he needs. The requirements are of the Lord. What does that mean? That means the church of God must be built in the way of God. Amen to that. So let's just read the Bible in case. <laughs> in case. Let's just be there. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 8. I think this is the NIV. So we cannot move away from building God's way. It says, do not move the ancient boundary which your fathers have set. One of the translations would speak about, um, go also to uh, Matthew 16, 18. One of the translations would speak about the landmarks. Do not remove the landmarks which your fathers have set. And then Matthew 16, verse 18, it says, and also I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Some of those that, 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 that were in the charismatic season know that this scripture, man, we used to use this scripture to evangelize to people door to door. And uh, everybody in, 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 in the, most of the people in the charismatic that were full of power to evangelize, they wanted to be called Peters because they believed that on them the church of God would be built. In fact, we had a leader in our church back then whose name was Peter, and he was like the, the, the guy. He was like Peter. He was like, God will build this church on me. I'm like, oh yeah, my brother, can I change my name to Peter? He says, no, I'm the only Peter. <laughs> But now these two scriptures work very well together in helping us see the design and mandate of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. How in every generation there must be an emphasis on how we ought to live by design uh, to be able to fulfill the purpose of God. And you see, so in every generation, that's why God would say, do not remove the landmarks because each and every generation that comes should learn from the landmarks. Can you see that? There must be that from uh, those landmarks that are not removed. They must know what the fathers have said, what the fathers have taught, what the fathers have built. Can you see that? So every generation here, or the generation that is here now, that is building apostolically, there's a generation that comes after you that still needs to learn what has been said to you, what has been taught to you, what you believe in. Is that okay? Some of you here are here simply because somebody in your life loved God and prayed for you and made sure you even went to Sunday school, go to church by force. And you're here today. I mean, my grandmother would make sure that she takes us to church every Sunday. We didn't like it, but she made sure. She made sure. In fact, my grandmother tells me uh, that when I was born, there was a struggle. There was a lot of complications. And she says, you were not moving. You were, you were just still. In fact, you were born still, not alive. And she said, we prayed that this one should be a fighter and come to life. After the prayer, the baby started crying. That's why I'm a fighter, baby. <laughs> <laughs> somebody prayed. Somebody was persistent in their prayer. And I believe that you can also give your testimonies to say, hey, somebody was really consistent in making sure I make it. I mean... I mean, uh, uh, years ago in Winbeck somewhere, uh, we wouldn't want to go to church, and the pastor of the church would come and fetch us, and then the excuse would be, 
we did not take a bath, so we're not going to church. Said, and the pastor said, I don't care, come here. And then just hoi us in the car like that. Like, you going to church? I'm like, okay. Some of those that say they cannot come to church because they didn't take a bath, we will fetch you, eh? <laughs> we are starting a movement. We are fetching everybody that says they, they cannot come to church today because it's cold. No, the cars have aircon. We will fetch you. It's warm in here. <laughs> That's why some of us are here today. Because somebody didn't give up on us. So don't give up on those that are in, in, in your life. So, so God is not building an empire, but he's building his sons. And we must understand in this, uh, um, the equation of yes and no. Um, some people love it when you say no. Uh, when you only say yes and not no. Look, when you uh, uh, um, have kids in your home that are growing, your children, and you're trying to teach them men as principles how to live their lives, you will not say yes all the time, right? There's a time when you say no. Even, even though you love them and you'd like to say yes just to make them happy, you just say no because you want to teach them that there's both sides to the coin. It cannot always be nice your way, but sometimes you have to learn that things don't go the way you think they go, right? Same applies. When God says no, listen and do what God says. Sometimes we like it when God says yes, but we don't like the no of God. So understand that there are a lot of, as we grow, there are a lot of mistakes that we will make and be open to correction because God is building you. Okay? No, no, no one knows everything. If you know everything and you don't want to be advised, you don't want anyone to say anything to you or correct you, that means you start living in isolation and you're shutting off the important things, even grace that must come into your life. So God builds that way, building his son, and God will put people around you okay, that will love you, that will support you, that will encourage you, that will strengthen you, that will advise you. Yeah, some advices are not so good, but <laughs> you will have a few that will give you good advices. Hmm. Some people, you spend time with them, they give advices, and when they leave, you're like, oh my goodness, where do they leave? <laughs> what are they talking about? Some advices, hmm. So I believe this time in our lives needs people who listen very well uh, to what the Lord is saying and people who operate beyond programs um, that only seek to tell God what he needs to do and when. When we come into this space or this time in our lives, we have to be in a place that we don't tell God what to do. We ask God what is it that he wants us to do. Things have to change now because we come understanding that we have to receive the purpose from God and that which must be done must be done God's way. So the building of the church of God should be founded and built and established on Christ. We cannot afford to move this ancient economy within God's, um, um, with which, within which God is building. So we cannot move, we cannot take that out. Uh, people have taken a lot of things out of the church of God. And as a result, the glory has left. Can you see that? There are certain things you cannot take out. You cannot take out the pure teaching of the weight. You cannot take it out of it. Look, you can change furniture. You can paint some more. That's okay. But you cannot take out the weight. I mean, we took out the curtains, but the word still is here. Christ is still the, uh, the, the center. Can you see that? So people take out the most important thing, the heart, the heart of the church, which is the weight, and substitute it with entertainment and performance. And then they say, we are the church. It's not going to happen that way. The word of God is the life of the church. When the word leaves the church, 
that church is dead. Can you see that? All these other things are extras that God has blessed us with. But the weight is and must be primary in, in, in our lives. So, so we cannot afford to move these things in our lives. So, and also one of the things that we have to be careful of, like talking about moving certain things, um, modernity cannot run the church of God. People tend to modernize things too much. And when we modernize things, we, we step outside of God's boundaries and we start to do our own things. This is where people like Apostle Thamma will speak about the mixed wine. You come into the presence, you listen to worship, and then this, the wine is mixed. You listen to the word, the wine is mixed. Everything in that place, the wine is mixed. It must be the pure word of God. People must feed from the pure word of God. Um, and this is where we come into understanding that this is how God builds, not us people. So these landmarks are the safeguards for the church. And it is when the Bible says, he who breaks, it's like when the Bible says, he who breaks the hedge, the snake will bite him. Have you ever read that scripture? That says, he who breaks the hedge, the snake will bite him. If you don't believe it, when you get to your place, uh, the wall, the fencing that protects your house, take it down. You'll put it up tomorrow. Just take it out today, just today. And then put it up tomorrow. You will see. That's just a practical example. You take down that fence, the same night, you will be attacked. Somebody was going to come in and take whatever they want. So you're protecting yourself, right? First the natural, then the, the spiritual. If we break the hedge in the spirit, the snake attacks. You are not safe. You are not protected. You are vulnerable. Hmm? You don't have antivirus in the spirit that way. So all the malwares will come and go deep into your system and start to kill. By the time that tree falls, you know it's been eaten from the inside or from the root level. So make sure, make sure. There's virus and there's malware. Do you know that? The malware go deeper into your system and they eat, eat and destroy and destroy. Once you realize that there's a malware on your system, it's gone. It's gone. So be careful. Keep the hedge standing. Keep yourself protected in the sense of God. So it is important. We keep ourselves within the city wall. So the earth was given form, shape, and design uh, by which it must function by God. And this is after we take a look at really Genesis 1, verse 1 to 2, where God, through the introduction of light to mankind, gave um, the form from which we were to be taught and patterned. And there must be an accurate administration of, of from both realms, that is, um, first of the natural and then one of the spirit. And these that help us understand that this quality of life should really be as a result of functioning according to, 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 to the design. So God gave form, shape, and purpose to mankind and to the church. And he came to introduce himself in a form of light. So God has set patterns in the way that communicates to us really uh, what we ought to be as the church and how the church should actually function in the earth as a representative. Um, um, doesn't matter on the size and whatever. Um, but we know the cosms or the sizes that we have spoken about. But God gives purpose, God gives clear mandate as to how the church should function. Hence, I said this is just an introduction to the whole details that I want to bring forward in terms of how God is building his church. Can you see that? So, first of all, we see how God in the beginning would come in a form of light. Once God comes in the form of light, there's something that God wants us to see. Okay? Amen. 
when God brings light, He wants us to see something. He wants us to know something. And that which God wants us to know, we must find out what it is. Can you see that? Now, He reveals Himself. As he, that means God wants us to see Him. See God in everything. That's what He reveals first. God didn't reveal all these sorts of things to us, but He revealed Himself. And uh, uh, so it must be a okay. So uh, there must be these administrations that have... Look, for, for the Church of God, when it's been built, there are administrations that must come into place. Um, there's, a, there's, there's, there's this natural or physical way of doing things and the spiritual way of doing things. Let's, let's make an example. In, in this church, for this church to uh, really function well, it needs both the spiritual administration to it and the natural one. Okay? In the natural administration of running this place, you find us here every day in the office doing the work, doing the, the maintenance, fixing this, fixing that, making sure the place is comfortable for everyone, handling of finances and stuff. Those are physical and natural administration part of running the church. But there's also the spiritual administration of running the church with which if it is, or, or, by, if it is neglected, the church will collapse irrespective of what resources it has in the natural. Can you see that? So the church must be strong in the spiritual administration as well as in the natural administration of things. Can you see? So these both, both these uh, uh, um, environments, if you would, should be practical in the house of God. If we fail it in the spirit, there's a problem. Big problem, whole problem for the church. And we have learned extensively how there are two sides that we need to see um, um, to see things in which uh, uh, both in the natural and the spiritual have to understand the emphasis on these. Like the Bible says, first the natural, then the spiritual. This is easily seen in the Old Testament where God gives instructions to Moses to lead the church out of bondage and also in the patterns that were used to build the tabernacle like we see. So there are specifications in terms of the direction we have to take as the church, uh, that is why the apostolic link cannot, cannot, and I repeat, cannot be broken. Do you know what the apostolic link is that cannot be broken? Because, um, like for example, I did a teaching many years ago about the pool of Siloam. Do you remember that pool of Siloam teaching? Where you see in the book of John, Jesus sees a man, means a man that is blind, right? The man that is blind is symbolic of the church. The man lost perspective, lost sight of things, and he's not connected. The man was disconnected from um, the set man, home, the father, or Siloam speaks of representative father, okay? So, Jesus reconnects the man to his father. And the man is connected to the apostle of the lamb. And the apostle of the lamb is connected to the presence of God. You know that. Because the man washes in Siloam. Siloam is connected to Gihon, the second river in the book of Genesis, chapter 2. And that river is connected to Eden, which speaks of the presence of God. So if Eden was not, uh, did not have a flow to make the river that is called Gihon, there wouldn't be Siloam because Siloam was feeding from Gihon and Gihon was feeding from the presence of God. Do you understand that principle? So that apostolic link can never be broken. If that link is broken, God fails to build the church because grace does not flow. Can you see that? Here's the church here, right? Here's the church here. And 
Let's make an example. Jesus comes, finds you as the church, hmm? and says, go and listen to the teaching, my teaching, from the sad man in your own house, Joseph. Okay? Because Joseph receives from John. Okay? There's a relationship. It's not broken. And John still has a relationship with Thamo. It's still connected. And Thamo is the apostle of the Lamb. Can you see that? It can never be broken. If it's broken somewhere, huh, there's a lot of problems in the church. That's how God builds. No one builds alone. If you are the man of the hour building alone, it will collapse. That's why uh, the Bible would say, if it is not God who builds the house, the, he that builds that house does it in vain. So God's way of building is to preserve the link and make sure he maintains that link so that there will be a flow of the river or the waters of life coming from the presence of God. That is grace. So these precepts are important in building God's way. Building God's way. So we have to understand them. So these ancient landmarks can never, that's why the Bible is specific. These ancient landmarks never remove them uh, or substitute them. Um, that will cause a maladministration in churches and it causes havoc and invitation to foreign practices even death to people like Uzzah. As Uzzah, you know, in the administration of carrying the ark, you don't touch. But some people are so brave, they say, if it falls, I'm going to touch it. And the result is death. And you cannot blame God. The administration is clear. Say, so certain things don't put your hands on them. That's how God builds. And failure to be obedient to that weight of from God results in problems. It invites for rain spirits. It, it does a lot of things. Can you see that? That's why we need um, the spirit of God. That's why the Bible would even, uh, one of the criteria, if we can use that weight, the most important criteria in the word of God for people coming in the ministry is that they must be full of spirit. Why? Because as a leader, if you are full of spirit, you build according to the pattern of God, not your own thing. If you are not full of the spirit, you have your own group in someone else's house. Wilfred and Mary will have the deacons as their own group and start a cell church at their own house. After three months, they have a church. And then they call it Word, oh, oh, word of Worship or something. So, <laughs> something competitive to what they break away from. Because that's the spirit. That's what it builds. Can you see that? But one must be full of spirit so that they build according to the pattern that is set for them. By God. By God. We are still building God's way, hey? Hey, time is running out, and I have a lot of things to say. This is a result, really, okay, of maladministration. We're talking about the result that comes from that, the mishandling of God's things. It is as a son that we learn to do things right. Otherwise, we find ourselves, or we find accommodating ways to please God. So when we were talking, even when we were talking about the, the, the finances, we mentioned that, remember when we mentioned that tithe is a destroyer? When you release it, it destroys the destroyer, but when you keep it, it destroys who? The keeper. So these are basic principles that God gave to us to teach us this is how you ought to live. I mean, if you look in the Bible, God has given us all the principles to set us free in everything. I'm telling you, God has given all his bold, his put principles that builds the church in a way that the church should never struggle with anything. 
And we cannot afford to be lazy to look in that and say, what are you saying about this? What are you saying? How do I get out of this? I mean, I mean God, here, here's God. He, people are in the wilderness for 40 years. They are men, women, children, right? Animals, if you would. Men, but let's speak about this. Men, women, and children. Do you ever hear any mention of rape in the wilderness? God is a God of order. Goodness me. God gave principles that protected everything. And people were so obedient that they knew if they crossed the law, there was punishment. God would not like that. So everybody said, I'm going to listen to God. I'm not going to... I'm listening to God, eh? I'm listening to God. <laughs> it's like the guys that rebelled against Moses and the guys and say, yeah, God cannot use them alone. And God just cracked open the... The, the earth and then they all fell in there and everything of them fell in there and the Bible says there was no memory of them. Whew. That's tough, eh? That is very, no memory. It's like they, they never existed. Nothing of them was left on earth to be remembered by. You talk about them like, who? Oh, oh, I don't know. Maybe it's them. They fell in and that happened. So there were laws that governed everything in the wilderness. There are spiritual laws that must govern the church so that each person lives according to the weight, never steps out. We all must come to that. Can you see that? That's building a healthy church. Building a healthy church. So... The church can never de afford to divorce itself from the current stream of his word in the season. If we do not keep up with, we end up, or if we don't keep up, we, we end up outdated. And our part in the mystery becomes sweat of the brow because we will be trying to, to, to catch up and all that. So the church that remains connected can never be cursed for it is blessed. These are the weights that were spoken by God to Balaam. Remember how he was asked to come and kiss the Israelites. <laughs> and then he goes to God. He said, okay, king, wait guys, let me go to God and ask him about your request. And God says, don't go with those people. Listen, you cannot kiss these people because they are blessed. That's, God, what, that's what God said. So these guys are blessed. You can never kiss them. So everything that is blessed can never be cursed. Never be cursed. That's what God said. Unless you allow yourself to step outside of the blessings of God. Remember the city wall? Remember the hedge? Remember we protect ourselves? If we step outside, aha. Uh -huh. But if we are within the city walls, that protection, the blessings of God will all continue to flow. Continue to flow. So let us not divorce ourselves from these. Um, so there must be, oh my goodness. So spiritual, I, I mean, is essential for the church's functionalities. Now, this is a critical and will determine the effectiveness of the church, of God, and leaders ought to understand that church is not their business empires, but really the medium within which the body of Christ, which cannot be found, uh, is which cannot be found sickly as it delays the process or the progress in many areas of, of, of the church. So Paul sees it and addresses the church to say, I'm paraphrasing that some of you ought to be teachers of the word by now but you are still babes in need of milk. This means that some of the spiritual administrations are neglected, and as a result, the church is struggling. When we neglect 
spiritual administrations, the church will suffer. If, if, if as a leader, you neglect spiritual administrations in your households, that particular household you lead will struggle. You have to break free, break people free. It's in your responsibility as a leader. Okay? Tough one, eh? It's a tough one. So the teaching of the word has become, here's other, other problems. The teaching of the word has become a head knowledge and topical instead of being an of being expository teaching of the word of God. One challenge, one of the challenges. And now pe people prefer to go with the trend of being bored when the word is being preached to them and uh, choose to do soul and ties in things like um, they, they chat, they tweet, they Facebook during the church service. As I was at church, during the church service, as I, as I was. <laughs> Do you know the strictness of um, the coming of the word of God in the Old Testament? God was very strict. Nothing should substitute the time with God. Nothing. When the word comes, nothing should be able to distract you as a child of God. Never, ever allow it. Never allow the veil of the flesh to distract you, steal from you. Because that's the intention of the enemy. So this, this one is not going to hear what God wants to say to him today. Because I want to mess his life up for the whole week. So I'm, I'm denying him the quality time with his father. And then takes away everything. So never allow that. So we also have to look at the yeah, strictness of the presentation of God's word from the time of Moses on, uh, on how nothing can substitute the word that we said. So, and to build a strong nation that is able to conquer anything, the Old Testament should be the schoolmaster in terms of uh, what the Israelites fail in and take it as our admonition as we go forward as the church. So in building the strong house, there will be challenges that we will come across my time is up and I still have a lot of stuff that I wanted to say because next week I wanted to really go into details to say let's now look uh, at some of the patterns or the ways that God built his house. This, this, I, I believe this particular teaching is going to help us see some of the things that maybe we are skipping and, 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 and not seeing there. Um, but it is important to understand as a body of Christ, that we build how? God's way. It must be God's way. If it's not God's way, it is not for us. It must be according to the design. And I think we will look also at the, the people like Nehemiah, in terms of how the, he would build. And, and all the prophets in the Old Testament, the guys in the Old Testament, look at David, we look at how, how, and end up with uh, looking at how the Lord Jesus Christ builds his church. Because he says, I will build my church and the gate of Hades will not prevail against him. So, the intention of God is to build the prevailing church. It must prevail against everything. It must stand. It must be strong. We are not building a weak church that is looking forward to the day where it's, it flies away but we're building a church that knows how to stay and possess what is theirs. Okay? Stay, remain here, and possess what is yours and continue to enjoy being in the presence of God all the time. Let's just stand, please. Father, we thank you again and we just want to appreciate you that your word will come to teach us, Lord, to guide us, to lead us. And Lord, to say things even that, things that are, we find ourselves uncomfortable to appreciate. 
but because you are doing it and you are working in our lives we just want to appreciate the time that you take to minister to us to teach us to lead us to guide us and to forever communicate with us in and through your word so this morning lord we appreciate that and we appreciate the love that we receive from you as we continue to go into the word and look at how you are raising your son in the earth and lord teaching us as how to stand how to live and how to handle everything as your son we appreciate you give you praise honor and glory in jesus name we pray and everybody says amen, amen. well thank you uh, let's just come and uh, give done so much for me When you heal, you heal completely. be more. You see, can do with singing. What shall I? What shall I render to Jehovah? done so very much for me oh what shall I render to Jehovah oh, he has done so very much for me <laughs> Let us pray. Indeed, you are a good God. And this is who you are. We want to thank you again, Father, this morning for your word. We want to thank you, Father, for enabling us to be able to come and hear you. We pray that you make it possible for us to see you, the invisible, in the visible sent one of yours. As we heard that, the chain must not be broken. We are blessed. We are really graced that we are in a house where your grace is flowing. We ask all this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.